Good morning, my soccer universe. Well, 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 that was a nice game yesterday evening. And no, I'm not talking about Manchester United against Barcelona. Um, in a way, it was almost predictable um, that the Juve Ajax, Ajax Juve game would be the better one. I keep switching. Uh, I think America missed me up there. I don't know. Uh, no, um, seriously. If when I had to choose between the two games, if I would have to choose, I think I would have uh, picked Ajax against Juve um, because Ajax is such an exciting side to watch, and Juventus is Juventus, uh, meaning there is a lot of routine experience and also a lot of class in that side. Now, when I look at uh, Manchester United Barcelona, is probably from the clubs involved a slightly bigger matchup and only because Ajax is not a top five league team. Uh, in my mind, they are a top team, but I understand the modern economics. Um, and Barcelona was overwhelming favorite against Manchester United, so I really didn't expect much from that game. And although I haven't seen highlights, I have read, I read up enough on that game to be comfortable say that this was a restrained but very comfortable performance for Barcelona, who got their goal in the 12th minute. That one I saw. I don't know why the zone uh, couldn't put out highlights uh, by six o'clock in the morning for either of the two games. I mean, I watched at least the one game, but um, I would have loved to uh, watch some highlights and see a little bit more. I saw the goal, uh, which was beautiful, passed by Busquets to Messi, who passes it uh, to Suarez, who's also at the edge of the side. Um, and he had it. He had it towards the direction of the goal, but I think he would never have gone a goal if Luke Shaw doesn't give it a wicked deflection and it goes in. That's exactly what Barcelona needed. Then they could control the game, and when Barca controls the game, they make the game slow to preserve energy. And there was really not much coming from United, from what I could uh, tell. Um, Coutinho had a great chance, uh, Suarez in the second half should, should have probably made a second goal. Uh, United didn't have a great shot, on, didn't have a single shot on goal. Uh, they seemingly, after being uh, thoroughly dom dom dominated in the first 25 minutes or so. And as of late, I, it, I mean, it might be a bias on, on my mind, but it always seems that when there's a dominant performance by one team, uh, it's usually less for the, uh, for the first 25 minutes or so, um, and then it gets more even. So uh, this is a theme that keeps cre creeping up that there, you can even split the um, halves in two. Uh, that you always can say, okay, uh, we have the first quarter of the half, it's very... Uh, there's one way the game is played and then it switches slightly over to a different stage and then sometimes it starts the same way in the second half as well. Um, but yeah, I, th I think the other thing of note is the broken nose for, ne for Messi, thanks to Smalling. Uh, but from all that you could tell, and I mean, uh, we have said that before, PSG, there is no reason to, to believe that Barcelona is not gonna go easily past Manchester United. Uh, you gotta be honest and I expect it to be easy, maybe not that easy for Barcelona. Um, it's a little bit disappointing if you're a United fan on the other side, you know. Uh, I saw the lineups, it was not that confidence inducing. But then in, again in Paris they managed to get a big result without having a big lineup out there. But yeah, um, it was almost predictable that the, the, that's the way the game is going. If Barcelona get 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 on the game uh, goal, not game, they can control uh, the game, and basically they can control the game uh, at will. It's not the I don't at least against a side like Manchester United. Uh, 
which also sounds ridiculous to say, but the current United is not a side that will um, force your their game on you. And you know, going to Barcelona, uh, we usually see a different Messi. It's also the fact. But uh, speaking of that, dictating the game, the other game, let me Le first of all say it was a wonderful game. Absolutely crazy game. Uh, not not crazy, wonderful, really wonderful game to watch. Uh, and most of it goes down to Ajax, who absolutely convinced me in their play. I mean, this is, uh, it's um, kind of, um, the modern way, it's not this beautiful game of the Dutch with a lot of possession and passing the ball around and switching positions. It is still there, but it is, it's maxed up to the highest speed with a lot of pressing. And from the beginning, Ajax took the game to Juventus in a way that made Juventus at least initially very uncomfortable. Uh, on the other side, and, and I'm, talk, I'm talking about chances in, in a sec, but uh, general observation, Ajax always managed at the beginning of the half, at least for 15 if not 20 or more minutes, to really uh, make Juventus uncomfortable. However, um, Juventus always then managed to kind of hold them a little bit of bay, let them play, uh, let them knock themselves out uh, up until the box. In the box we have control and this uh, it's kind of a very uh, Juventus way of playing um, very uh, sobering uh, very cold very very calculated there's not uh, you know Ajax had the passion and Juventus just stayed cool calm collected that's all that's how you have to say it uh, there's not much that's basically what you would expect from uh, these two teams. Um, I thought in the first 15 minutes really that Ajax put Juventus on the back foot, had chances uh, and they could sustain it for about 25 minutes. And the quick passing moves, the quick uh, Changes, position changes, you never knew who is really coming. I mean, the ad, at the beginning was uh, mainly shots from Ziyech, but I think the biggest chance fell to, uh, to Don in the back. Uh, I think it was a ball that came from Tadic uh, that he just he turns, hurts around and misses, but that much the goal. I mean, uh, this, this was a huge chance. If he just hits it a little bit uh, tighter, that ball is going in, and then Chesney has, has nothing. Do, can, can do nothing about it. Um, Chesney actually made a couple of really good saves. Um, there was one situation where I have to have that. Uh, I think this was any, this was the chance that Donny Debeck had, where they had the ball. There were uh, three or four Ajax players around, three U U players, and they were passing the ball. Very short passes, left, right, le left, right, always looking out for for each other until the ball then falls to 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 the side. It was brilliantly played. It's absolutely gorgeous play, but also the positioning of Juventus. Uh, the big downer for Juventus was yes, Ronaldo was playing, but Chiellini, who I think is more important to to, to, to Juventus, overall was not playing, and so Rugani had to come in, and you know the partnership. Uh, Bonucci, uh, Rugani is not as solid as, of course, Chiellini, Bonucci, uh, and I would even say it's. If I had to miss one between Chiellini and Bonucci, I'd rather miss Bonucci than uh, Chiellini. So that immediately kind of made things a little bit harder for Juventus, but they are such a... Once they held Ajax at bay, it, 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 it seemed really like, let them get a little bit tired, let them play their uh, style. It's not all that cal 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 because they were shoved around. But you could clearly tell that Juventus kind of was just, well, let's wait and see. And the more the half went out, the more they dangerous it got. And I think there was already one big chance. And I want to say it is it's either Bernadeschi or Cancelo. I'm going to say no, uh, Bernadeschi, uh, who actually had had not a bad game, uh, who suddenly had a clear run on goal, seemingly. I mean, wide open on the right. Um, 
and for a split second he looks up and decides what to do uh, wants to go in still at high speed but Frankie de Jong of all people comes back and makes a tackle a clean tackle uh, to get the ball out of harm's way this was for me the play of the first half almost because not it showed uh, not only that Juventus can all, all also be dangerous but that everyone for Ajax is there to um, help each other out and Frankie de Jong is not a defender this was a pretty darn uh, cool move um, and so yeah I think around the third, 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 fifth I always I, I thought yeah I think Ajax has not much coming I mean they had a few shots there but I thought yeah this is probably gonna end with a uh, nil nil at halftime not quite because there's this tall Portuguese person who had the ball, pays it out to Cancelo. There's Cancelo and Bernadeschi sounds on the right. Cancelo makes a cross in and Ronaldo with a full sprint. And this was almost the only time I really saw him fully, fully sprinting through the entire game. Has it in. 1 0. And it's almost, you, you can say. It is very similar to what happened to last last week. Uh, unbelievable. It was not the first shot on goal for Juventus. Uh, at least that uh, was redeeming. But ice cold. They punish you when you just... I mean, they punish you at the right moment. It was really... They just lost Ronaldo, who moved a little, little bit back to escape his uh, defenders and then darted into the box to get this ball in. Uh, it was a great Ronaldo goal, I have to say. Uh, but it was a little bit deflating, you thought, because this was the last uh, action of the game, more or less. Uh, it was halftime, right thereafter. And yeah, Allegri, at that moment, you can say, I mean, Ronaldo didn't look super fit. It, I think it was a risk playing him. I would not have played him, especially if a Moise Kane in such a great uh, condition, who actually didn't see any playing minutes. Probably he didn't need to. 1-0 uh, Juventus. Um, and I thought, oh, this is going to be a tough one. This is going to be just like the Real Madrid game. Maybe it was, because, uh, not quite, but almost. Um, because right at the beginning of halftime, I was still reading up a little a little bit on Brexit. And so, oh, 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 Cancelo. And Cancelo uh, basically gave the assist to both goals. Uh, Cancelo loses the ball, and Neres darts in the box and shoots it into the net. Neres has another one that had a great game. Uh, shoots it in, in, in the goal 1-1 one, one in the 46th minute so you had a goal immediately before and immediately after halftime and then again Ajax trying to get something going but with not as much punch uh, behind it as in the first half but still wonderful to watch and what I like most is that you could see that all players on the field actually had fun playing this game you could see a lot of smiles whenever there, was some, there was someone uh, Come, 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 come up now. You could see usually the Ajax player smiling or hugging the Juventus player. I mean, there, was, there, were, there were two or three scenes like that where you could really see that everyone is enjoying themselves. That this game is fun to play. And uh, that is two great teams. It's not that Juventus was uh, bad by no means. It was just that Ajax uh, was more on the offensive and Juventus were more on the defensive side. And both played a great game at that. I thoroughly enjoyed watching it and you know when the game died down at, 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 at the end there was really a good chance that Juventus actually wins that one Douglas Costa hitting the post that was the biggest chance that didn't go in um, I was afraid that it's gonna go all the way in, 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 in and it didn't so it ends 1-1 and I think I predicted the 1-1 I don't know what I'm other predicting the other game but it ends 1-1 And there you go. Uh, the game goes back to Turin. Yes, it's the result that Juventus wanted. I don't think we need to... Uh, or a result that is favorable to Juventus. We don't need to uh, talk around that. But on the other side, you don't... I don't think Ajax will go with fear into to Turin. I think Ajax 
after that win at, at the Bernabe, yes, Juventus is a completely different proposition uh, because they're solid at, at the back, which Real Madrid definitely is not. Uh, but I can see that this second game could also be very exciting. Um, still, I think Juventus will go through. I've, they showed enough routine and the cleverness in the first leg that I don't quite see it happening for Ajax. But boy, it was uh, fun to watch. Just one little negative aspect to it due to the draw that Ajax got at Juventus now. The Dutch will have this conditional fixed spot in the Champions League for the 2020-21 uh, season. Uh, they leapfrogged Austria just by a hair. To be honest, yes, I would have taken it, but Ajax deserved it. Ajax and the Netherlands deserved it. I think it would not have been as tight if PSV would have gotten a better draw. Because that's the one thing that most people tend to overlook. PSV is not a really good team, but they had a really tough draw. They had Inter, Barcelona and uh, Spurs in there. And they acquitted themselves quite well and were, either, you can say, dropped by the referee, at least against Inter, if not uh, in other games as well, where they should have probably done more. But I really enjoyed it. This was one of the best games that I've watched uh, this year, for sure. Uh, the comparison, if, if I if you talk best game, always goes to Manchester City Liverpool at the beginning of the year. Uh, it was up there. Not quite, but I think it was up there. It was a really, really enjoyable game. Uh, I sacrificed some sleep over, all, all over it, and yeah, since I didn't, see, I didn't see anything of the Barcelona, I honestly didn't sleep that well, so I woke up too early, uh, and I'm not sure how much Europa League I'm gonna watch today. I wanna, but you know, sleep is important and I'm sure there will be highlights to watch in the morning as well. But yeah, it was worth it. It was absolutely worth it. Um, yes, Ajax has not won, but I'm bearing Ajax because this was so enjoyable and great to watch. This side is exciting and I think the most depressing thing is if you're an Ajax fan, uh, and I count myself, I'm as an Ajax fan. I mean, they are not, they're not last guy not Milan, but uh, they're in this second tier of teams that I really like. Um, at, the, at, at, at the moment, even ahead of Barcelona. The depressing thing is that this side will not stay together. Uh, it would be so much fun to see what would happen if they could stay together for two or three years. Oof, I would love to see that. It's not gonna happen. Uh, the realities of modern soccer are just brutal. But anyway, let's enjoy it while we can. Young, exciting team. I'm gonna look forward to the game. I really hope that Sky will not pick that one up, that I can watch the return leg. Um, I'm afraid they just might uh, do that, but is hoping that they will go with the game that everyone wants to watch. Uh, meaning where there are more fans, and that's of course Barcelona against Man United. From that point, I get it from a sporting competitive perspective. Uh, Juve Ajax is, I think, the most exciting tie in this quarterfinal. Um, maybe City against Spurs can get into conversation, but there, yeah, let's see. There, it, it remains to be seen. Um, the, you know, there's not a big, so such big of a contrast between the two teams. Uh, I mean, Spurs is a little bit more like Ajax, but City is not necessarily like Juventus. But uh, they are like Juventus in in the way that they are the established, the more talented team. Although, yes, Jordi uh, yes, yes, I have a hard time calling um, Ajax the less talented team. They are on the back side, they may are, may, may be are. Anyway, um, I don't know how my prediction was for the, for, for the Barcelona game, but I got two results, I think, right, which uh, is a surprise to me, but I'm quite happy with that. Um, looking forward to next week, um, 
I think Liverpool and Barcelona, I think Barcelona has the biggest advantage going into uh, those games. Uh, Liverpool also looks kind of safe-ish. I mean, I go more and I would say Liverpool has the best uh, position. Um, Ajax next, uh, Juventus I would say next and then uh, yeah, City probably has the most work ahead of them. Um, I think it's possible that Ajax does something I don't quite believe in it. So that's where I'm going. So I think uh, most comfortable team Barcelona, Liverpool, Juventus, uh, City of the four favorites. Well, let, let me know what you thought about those games yesterday. Um, any comment is welcome. Um, Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these or others about my soccer jersey collection. I'm getting a new jersey uh, very soon. Um, yeah, I'm trying to post daily, so hit the subscribe button and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.